I would have invited you, Muhammad. Oh, yeah. I would have totally gone with you. <laughs> The Real Ghostbusters was a misnomer. This was animated. The Real Ghostbusters was a continuation from the original movie. The Real Ghostbusters, is it real enough for you? Mm, poignant. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Falling Towers Watch the First Podcast, a podcast in which we watch the first episode of a series so that you don't have to, as you may have okay. guessed. Oh, I'm so sorry. You're right, Mohammed. Uh, as you may have guessed, we're doing the real Ghostbusters today. The first episode is entitled Ghosts Are Us. This was September 13th, 1986. We have a very special guest today. It's screenwriter and author Peter Holmstrom. Hey, hello. Thank you very much for having me on. We say screenwriter and author, but he actually does a ton of stuff. Like just way too much stuff i don't know how one person can do all that but it's pretty amazing speaking of which you know dr nor does a lot of stuff too especially star trek science advisor and vice provost at duke university hello always a pleasure to be on falling towers watch the first of things thanks for having me back and my name is ryan t husk and i do one thing introduce me <laughs> <laughs> but i'm damn good at it you i can introduce the stuff. hell out of somebody <laughs> so much stuff. so much stuff. actor pro executive producer producer all sorts of projects from voyager doc to seventh rule to virtual trek content like so much stuff yeah that is a lot thank you yeah damn i feel good now <laughs> uh <laughs> no but let's get into this this is very important everybody please like this video uh, please subscribe to this channel if you're listening in. Give it a five-star rating and a review. We'd really appreciate that. And if you'd like us to review a Saturday morning cartoon, because it's Saturday morning cartoon month, as we like to call it, Muhammad calls it chill month. Hey, we just get some hot cocoa. Uh, mm -hmm. Please leave us a comment with your suggestions in the comment section below. Just type WTF, that stands for Watch the First, of course. And whatever show you'd like us to review and tell us where we can review it. So for example, you would say WTF, the real ghostbusters parenthetically, I think it was on Amazon prime. You could also watch it on YouTube. So that's it. Let's get into it. I have no idea where to go though. Muhammad. Oh, then you'll be excited to know it's your favorite section. First, it's called the predicaments where each of us predict what the others thought of the show without giving away whether we liked it. Mm-hmm. It is my favorite part of the show. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, look, Muhammad and I have known each other for a while. We know each other pretty well. We can predict if the other person liked it with a good percentage of accuracy. Peter and I have known each other not too long, maybe a year or two. A uh, but I think I got them pegged. We'll see. I don't know, Muhammad and Peter, how long have you guys known each other? Similar to you and Peter, probably. A little bit longer, I think. Like we've been oh, okay, connecting good. up uh, before that. But, but all again. right, this is gonna be a fun one. This is gonna be real guesses. Then, all right. So, Muhammad, my prediction to you is that you are somewhat of a fan of the Ghostbusters franchise. I think you like it. I think you have fun. Uh, I think you laughed at the movies back in the day. I think that you have obviously a Winston plushie doll in your bedroom <laughs> that watches over you at night. And I think that you liked this cartoon. Uh, it's not a 10, but I think you liked it. Peter, I think you also liked it. I think you're an even bigger fan of Ghostbusters. I think, I think you like Ghostbusters a lot, in fact. Uh, so I think you liked this one. Those are my predictions. What do you think, Muhammad? So on this one, I'm going to guess Peter is warm on it. I think I think you thought it was okay. That's my guess. You didn't love it, but you thought it was okay. Ryan, I think you were like, "What is this?" <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you're gonna. I think you're not going to enjoy this at all. <laughs> I think it's going to be quite low. That's my that's my prediction. <laughs> what do you say, Peter? Uh, for me, uh, Muhammad, I just, I, I know you love to love things and I love that <laughs> yeah. about you. Uh, Aww, so I, I think uh, I'm going to say that you're, you you will have liked it. You might have a few moments where you're a little critical on some things, but I'm going to say all in all, you, you really enjoyed it. Um, 
Ryan, I'm going to say this was a show that you watched when you were a kid mm-hmm. and you loved it. And that maybe now, though, revisiting it, it's like, eh, I don't know, you know, it, it maybe doesn't age as well as, as you would have remembered it being. But uh, but I'll still say that you're like, this is this is an enjoyable, enjoyable time on a Saturday mm-hmm. morning. Mm-hmm. That Peter, that happens a lot. Shows that you <laughs> like as a kid. You really think, oh, my God, with the Internet, I can now watch them again and forever. Yeah. This is the greatest point in human history. And then you go back and you're like, this show was terrible. <laughs> yeah. What is I would have been just happier just remembering the, the gleeful days of loving this show. But anyway, those are our predictions. Everybody at home, make your predictions now in the live chat or in the comments below. Do you think I like this show? Do you think Muhammad did? Do you think Peter did? For extra credit, what did we think about the Ghostbusters franchise in general? Take your time, make your predictions, type away. Dr. Muhammad Noor is going to buy us a little bit of time by telling us all what the show is even a boot. All right, time to buy that time. (laughs) The Ghostbusters chase a family of three ghosts into a chocolate factory and capture them amidst some chaos. Overnight, ghost pet Slimer goes for a snack and inadvertently releases the ghost family. The ghost family start raiding various places, but feign being their own captors as ghosts are us, thereby embarrassing the Ghostbusters. The ghost family then release a much larger ghost who runs amok in the city. Fortunately, the Ghostbusters are able to use their tools both to capture the original ghost family as well as to stop the giant ghost. Hmm. Hmm. All right, everybody. Uh, hopefully, you're almost done uh, making your predictions. Dr. Nor, where do we go now? I have no idea. Ah, oh, this is my favorite part now. This is what I like to call expectation, where we spend a little bit of time on what we expected before we watched the show, just for ourselves, and a lot more time on what we actually get in as we actually saw the show. That's why it knocks you out, because it's so exciting. <laughs> Scary. Uh, all right, so let's do that right now. Let's compare and contrast what we expected versus what we got. Starting with you, Muhammad, before mm-hmm. you watch this first episode of The Real mm-hmm. Ghostbusters entitled Ghosts Are Us. Oh, mm-hmm. I just realized that's kind of a double entendre because they're also saying that they are they are actually are ghosts. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the sneaky part. Wow, brilliant. Uh, Muhammad, what do Brady you expect? <laughs> what do you expect, if anything? I actually have never seen any of the Ghostbusters movies. <laughs> I've never oh, seen wow. any of them at all. However, I'm familiar with the Ghostbusters in that I had the video games <laughs> in the 1980s. Nice. So, yes. like, I know about, like, the Ecto guns and the plasma, and I know about Marshmallow Man. I mean, I know a lot about over. I know about it, a lot about it overall, <laughs> but I've never actually seen either the original instances, like, way back in the day, nor the more modern instances of it. I had never seen this cartoon. I assume they'd be out catching ghosts. I assume that they are, they are, uh, I guess, I, I don't, I, again, I've never seen the movie. I, I assume it was mostly kind of funny as opposed to super serious, but it probably had like a, an actual plot to it. I assume that the, this TV show would be similar where it's mostly kind of funny, but there is an overarching plot of catch the ghosts and save the city. So that's what I, that's what I assume going in. Hmm. All right. I'm a little tip. I'm a little off on that one. Uh, okay. Peter, what did you expect, if anything? It's um, this is one I, I'd never seen any either, and uh, surprised to hear how long it was actually on the air. It was a very, very long running show. Um, but uh, I guess I was expecting something maybe a little closer in tone to the movies. Like there was uh, maybe a little more emphasis on the scare factor and a little less on kind of the zany one liner. Uh, more kids factors like the ghosts are very personified in this in this show you know they even make a joke about like this family is coming from new jersey and they're just like kind of your your uh your your prototypical like new jersey family i guess from from that period but so i was expecting something a little more like scary maybe a little more aged up this feels more aged for like a three to seven demographic um and so maybe that's what i was expecting and then you know what we got was something um, don't don't see what we got don't say that yet i'm sorry Yeah, yeah yeah Huh. So that's what I was expecting. Yeah. Oh, good. That's a good point. That's a good point about uh, personification of the ghost mm-hmm. that was not present in the movie. I hadn't I hadn't figured out that difference there, but you're right. Totally. The the ghost 
did not. Well, anyway, we'll talk about that later. I'll tell you all what I expected, if anything. Uh, <laughs> personally, I think the first Ghostbusters movie is the most quotable movie in the history of humankind. That's why Dr. Knorr, tisk tisk. Uh, <laughs> I quote Ghostbusters pretty much two or three times every day. That's all I do. So anytime anybody's laughing at one of my jokes, it's because they just didn't realize that Ghostbusters did it first. Uh, and I'm just copying them. That's it. Nothing original there. Um, I had not, I didn't think I'd ever seen this uh, cartoon before. I didn't even really know that it existed until Mr. Mm -hmm. Mark Zickrey, who's written for Babylon 5, Star Trek Sliders, mentioned uh, that he also had written for the real Ghostbusters. He'd written for mm -hmm. Smurfs, too, which made me really perk up. Uh, so that's the only way I'd heard about it. I was like, the real Ghostbusters? Why don't they just call it Ghostbusters? Why can't they call the cartoon Ghostbusters? What's the problem? So I don't know. I expected to be kind of, I was kind of worried because I was like, I like the Ghostbusters, the first movie especially. Uh, second one. Hmm. So the second one, the modern one, or is there a second one in between? No, there was a Ghostbusters 2, which was still okay, but it was not at the level of the first one. So that's where I was. I was a little a little worried that it may not live up to the hype, especially since I'd never heard of it as a kid that I know of. But that's what we expected. Muhammad, what did you actually get? As you mentioned, that part of the reason I didn't see it wasn't that I had anything against it. It's just the person that I used to go to the movies with all the time, who, who was basically my only source for going to the movies, didn't, never invited me to it. So I just... <laughs> <laughs> I never... I, 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 I would have invited own. you, Muhammad. Oh, yeah. I would have totally gone with you. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> no, there it is. You're right, Peter. <laughs> there it is. I'll say the Muhammad it, sigh. <laughs> yeah. I'll give it an A plus for the theme music because I actually, I, even though I haven't seen the movies, I, I associate the theme music with happiness because I think of like the video games. I'm like, oh, I'm just playing those video games. That, that was good. Uh, is there anything else good to say? <laughs> <laughs> you monster. I, I, didn't, I didn't like this. I, mean, I guess it was easy. I mean, that goes along with what. Um, Peter started to say in the context of, uh, of you know, the demographic, maybe a three to seven year olds. It was easy. It was easy to follow what was happening. There was a lot of sort of the physical comedy and very little substance. It was very, very light on plot. I mean, honestly, as I was watching, I was watching it on YouTube. And at one point I was like, oh, let me click this to 1.25x speed. And then a little <laughs> while later, I clicked it up to 1.5x speed. <laughs> wow. And I still felt like I was losing nothing. And it still felt like... This is, I'm still having a hard time focusing on this. <laughs> I um, really didn't enjoy it at all. I'm sorry. That's um, quite skillful, though, that you can do that. Just put it at 1.5 speed and not lose anything. Yeah, no. Well, there was one point where I thought I lost something, but then I was like, wait, I didn't see how that happened. So I stopped it, rewound, and put it back at one speed. When I was like, no, actually, they just didn't show us. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, actually, so one thing, that, well, I, this might be getting a little bit too in the weeds. Um, was Slimer in the movie? I mean, Slimer reminded me of like the guy from the commercial from Mucinex. You know, the 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 like the snot yeah. thing that oh, you're yeah. trying to kill. That's, that, that's, fair. that's very fair. <laughs> or yuck mouth. If you go way way back to the old commercials from um, from the eighties. So, but yeah, oh, I, I I did not find it enjoyable. <laughs> mm, interesting. So I'll pass the baton to you. I'm sorry. I'm not being more positive. <laughs> I wanted uh, to like it more. I mean, I'm 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 almost where you're at as well i was not a, not a big fan of this um it felt like an odd throwback to kind of the the 1960s style of animation where it's just like your characters are just kind of fixed and they're just there and everything else is the things that are happening around them and you know for me like when you get into the 80s and particularly the 90s you're kind of looking for a bit more elevated animation that you'd get from like x-men the animated series or spider-man the animated series or something like that so to see this it just felt very kind of out of place and out of time and even like slimer is there just to be kind of like the scooby or scrap probably more appropriately scrappy do oh. surrogate where he's just like gonna do crazy shit every episode that kind of causes the problem and mm -hmm. and then in the end they have to kind of um you know, rescue or save whatever he did. And Slimer kind of redeems himself a little way. But um, yeah, it was I, the third act kind of started clicking for me a bit more when they're fighting this massive kaiju of a of a ghost. Um, but 
Yeah, you know, even there, I, I don't know. I don't know if I would have watched it week to week. Hmm. Interesting. Well, we'll find out for sure if you would soon. You watch. Uh, look. Uh, I'm looking forward to telling Peter and Muhammad why they are wrong about this show. Um, <laughs> sadly, that's not going to happen. Today. <laughs> I wish. I wish it were going to happen, but it's not going to. I thought that it was middling, you know, at best. It was kind of just meandering, mediocre. How many more M's can we throw in there? I don't know. But look, Dane, thank you. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, yeah, it was not very good. Just kind of at face value, not very good. But there was one major redeeming quality for me. I might as well just get into it now <laughs> or just save it for the end. No, uh, the one major redeeming quality was the voice acting talent. I was really impressed. I was like, wow, these guys are really giving it their all. Their voices are zany and fun and creative. I was like, these voice actors are coming up with extremely creative fashions of speech and ways to talk and all that, especially the ones that obviously did the ghosts, you know, the three main ghosts. I was really impressed by them. And so that actually gives this a major bump for me. Not, not too crazy, but still like that was the one major redeeming quality for me. And, and yeah, the, the Slimer thing doesn't do it for me. Thumbs down for Slimer. Sorry, Slimer, but if you're unlikable, you're unlikable, bro. And I don't even know. Was he a was he a character? Peter might remember. Was he a character in the second Ghostbusters movie? I don't remember him being a sidekick. No, or a um, and they didn't explain I'm, it in this one. If I'm not mistaken, this comes out before the second Ghostbusters. Yeah, uh, you're probably right. It was 1986. Mm. You're right. Yeah, so the Ghostbusters two comes out in eighty nine. So this was mm. this was only sourcing from the first movie, um, which is why you do get like a, a reference to Marshmallow Man at the beginning. But like yeah. uh, that's that's it. So Slimer's purely animated content, and they didn't explain them. I, I had a question about the ending, and that was the thing I had to stop and went back. Do you remember there was a scene there where Slimer was feeling bad and he was rushing off? They're like, "Well, wait, Slimer, no, don't." Did he actually do something? Because I, I try, I, I, I was like, wait, like we saw him run off, and then later we just see him with everybody again. And he didn't seem like he was relevant to anything that happened after that. Like, wait, what? Did he do something helpful? Damn, I, don't understand. I was hoping I missed it, and you guys saw it. No, but I, I actually do have the answer to this. Oh, uh, oh. so it's so a Slimer, like skids down the. I don't what what the hell do you call that the the um bridge thing the, yeah the bridge, bridge thing, thing. Yeah. the bridge uh, the big metal parts at the top that kind of hold up yeah. the so I used to know these words once yeah. upon a time um, but uh, uh, so he was sliding down that and the slime as in slimer came off of him and then the kaiju ah. ghost stepped on the slime and that's when he slipped. And then fell down into got the, it. So okay, they're celebrating nice. him like a hero for something that he didn't mean to do. That is so classic, like '80s cartoon. Wow, Slimer yeah. saved the day! Great yeah. job! And everybody's like, "That Slimer, oh boy, <laughs> oh, this, this Slimer. little rascal saves the day without even knowing it." But he means <laughs> well. But he didn't really mean well. He did, he was maybe he, it looked like he did mean to do something good, but I don't know that he I don't know what he thought he did. <laughs> but I mean the way he's like stealing food and hiding oh, yeah. and lying to them and deceiving them and all this. I'm like he doesn't really mean well. He's just some selfish jerk. <laughs> it's gross. I don't know. I think he's more got, like a toddler than like a jerk. But that's but you know <laughs> toddlers are jerks, Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you teach college students to get as far away from them as possible. <laughs> <laughs> uh did you guys have a favorite character of let's say the five main characters not slimer the fifth one being janine there was like i didn't even catch that they said their names more than maybe once <laughs> they're like it was very hard to decipher anything about them in the whole episode that's true it, it yeah. felt very like uh in again again in kind of the older eight uh animation tradition it's just like 
all the characters are kind of nondescript. They're just sort of, you know, minor variations of, of each other. Um, um, but I guess I'll just go with the character named Peter since my, my name is Peter. But it's, hey, uh, <laughs> <laughs> good choice. Uh, who and he had that guy had a pretty because that's the Bill Murray character from the Ghostbusters mm-hmm. franchise, right? So that, uh-huh. he, he had a pretty good Bill Murray. Yeah. Uh, uh, accent's not the right word, but he mm-hmm. sounded enough like Bill Murray. Though, so is, yeah. is this him right here? Is it this guy? No, to the right no, or to your right. This guy. Oh, sorry. The other, all the way to the other side. Sorry. This there guy. you go. That guy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's what my my thinking as well was like. I think we heard Peter Vankman talk first. He's the Bill Murray character, and I guess they just assume Muhammad that we all have seen. Ghostbusters, mm. and that's why we're watching the cartoon. And so that's why they didn't really need much of an introduction, except it would have been nice for them to explain why Slimer was suddenly their pet. It just a one line, one line would have been fine. Uh, but when Peter Bankman said his first line or two, I was like, wait, is that Bill Murray? You know, I kind of was like, it might be Bill Murray. And then I heard uh Ray talk, who's supposed to be the Dan Aykroyd character i'm like nah i don't i don't think they got the real plus they never get the the actual actors from the movie especially not back then they're just way too expensive but do you know who did the voice of winston zedmore was actually arsenio hall oh before he had his show i believe because this was 86 that's really yeah pretty amazing uh i did i actually ended up this is the first time i've ever seen a cartoon or one of the first times and actually like looked up the voice actors because i was so impressed by them um the biggest one that i that i was impressed with was a guy named uh frank welker uh he played ray he played slimer he played zonk the ghost and so i looked him up because he was so creative with his voices and now anybody that has heard of him is really upset with me saying, you've never heard of Peter Welker. He's only like one of the biggest names in the history of voiceover. The reason I'm saying that is because when I looked him up on IMDb, he had almost 900 credits. Whoa. 900, including, uh, I took a, a few notes because I, I recognize his voice. I was like, who is this guy? Why do I recognize his voice? I've heard it a million times. Well. He was Hefty Smurf on the Smurfs. He was Galvatron on Transformers. He was uh, a few G.I. Joes, including Torch on G.I. Joe and Wild Bill. Uh, Also on Transformers, he was Megatron, Soundwave, Rumble. He was the voice, uh, Muhammad, you'll like this one, of the Unicorn on Dungeons & Dragons, (laughs) Uni. Uni! Yes. (laughs) He was even in a Star Trek movie. He did the vo- in Star Trek Three. He did the voice of Spock screams, <laughs> the, just the screams of Spock. Uh, he was also, as you guys mentioned, Scooby Doo. He was Fred, uh-huh. which is what I think that's what I mostly recognize the voice because that was just his regular voice. Fred sounded like Ray. He was also mm-hmm. Iceman and you know uh, X Men and things right. like that. Oh. Anyway, so. And, and he the, was Fred going way back. Like this isn't even mm-hmm. like a more recent version mm-hmm. of Scooby Doo. Like he was totally. the original Fred, and he's, he's exactly wow. he's the Fred. The other guy that whose voice was familiar. That's why I was so obsessed with like looking these people up because I was like, I know these voices. Uh, Peter Vankman uh, was was later played by Dave Coulier, who you know from Full House and from Cut It Out. That guy, uh, but in this episode and before and the first couple seasons, it was a guy named Lorenzo Music. And the reason I recognized his voice was because he played Garfield in the oh. Garfield cartoon. And he also played Tummy Gummy in the Gummy Bears, which I recognized as well. Anyway, really impressed with that. Oh, last thing was that I didn't even, I just kind of checked to see uh, the writer credits. One of the main people in the writer's room, the story editor, was someone by the name of J. Michael Straczynski of Babylon 5. Uh, showrunner. Anyway, that's what I got. Uh, you guys got any good things to say about it? Or if not, just pummel it. Let's hear it. What's, what was the worst thing about this show? <laughs> well, well I, oh, go ahead. Sorry, please, go. please, no, please, please. <laughs> uh, you, you mentioned J. Michael Straczynski and kind of in my 
research for the show, it sounds like there was a lot of drama around it because really? like the writers had initially meant it to be a little more edgy, a little aged up um, with more like occult references and you know there was meant to be more of a mythos uh-huh. around these ghosts and like j max krasinski if anyone has seen babylon 5 he loves that stuff and it's um it's all a lot of a lot of you know mythos and world building and, and things and the studio had had kind of forced them to to dumb it down a bit because they had mm. brought in some big marketing company who said no, no 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 kids love kids love slime monsters and they love you know just adventure they don't really want story and uh uh, Straczynski like you know at some point he just left the show and a lot of the writers would just leave the show because they were just wow. like this is ridiculous and and the ratings kind of suffered because of it but um I found that very interesting in that like you know especially with animation because it takes so long to produce anyway it's like once you're you know three years into a project and and some marketing companies like you got to redo everything <laughs> it must not have been a very pleasant working experience but um I just found that very interesting that there is kind of an, an unseen Ghostbusters TV series out there that uh, that we could have got that was a little a little more edgy than this one. Wow. I wish we could find like the old notes from that. That's really yeah. good. Some oh, really yeah. good information there. Yeah. And JMS uh, made the right decision and moved on to bigger and better things. That's for yeah. sure. He was like, I'm tired yeah. of being the voice of reason here. I want to be the <laughs> voice of reason for my own show. Yeah. Brilliant. I was going to bring up the comment that, that you mentioned earlier, Peter, that that no intellect reading must be from New Jersey thing. Like, whoa, that was a weird, <laughs> that was a weird jab there. Like, where did that come from? I giggled at that. I was like, I, ah, <laughs> so I could miss a giggle a little bit, but it, it just seemed like this unusually, you know, sharp jab there out of nowhere. Um, one question I had, this may be something that's explained better in the movie. They kept on scanning to figure out the details about the ghost. Like, oh, this is a class five. Oh, this is a boy. But in the end, it seemed like you do the same thing no matter what. Like, does it matter? <laughs> and like, right. <laughs> you, you get the same little device out that then sucks it in. Like, did it matter what class it is? I don't know. I think it's, I don't know. What do you think, Peter? I think it's just because the two of those guys are, are like full on scientists, like Ray and Egon. So they're just studying. Maybe it, it helps okay. them to recalibrate yeah. the something or other like Jordy does, you know, or whatever. <laughs> or maybe they're just curious. They're enthusiasts, you know. What do you the think? Settings Peter? on the Ecto gun. <laughs> <laughs> I think like when you look at the 80s, that was a period where there was a lot of what was seen as being like very legitimate research into like paranormal activity. And they thought that they could like track it on like actual devices and so that's where ghostbusters is kind of trading off of is these like mm. well at the time we're seen as real you know ways to to find paranormal activity obviously they have you know they're not but the uh at the time there was all these like tests and stuff so if you watch the original ghostbusters it literally starts with um uh bill murray's character like trying to do like a like a psychic test on um uh this like very gorgeous young girl where it's the Mm -hmm. classic like 70s like can you guess what the card is that i'm holding Mm. up and uh you know i mean i'm sure you know about this more than i do but it's like during the 60s and 70s and 50s there was like legitimate research being done into that topics and um so that's kind of where they're playing off of but you're right i think in the movies too it does even just kind of become like we're just going to like zap it with some lasers and then uh get it into this little prison box that we have which is kind of your techno babble solution to a problem but in the movie they do kind of have to like amp up their power to deal mm. with this like massive class i don't even remember what the class i think it was a class 10 but it was meant Probably. to be like this bigger bigger ghost thing at the end like, um, which is where the which is where the crossing the streams joke comes from is they, oh, yeah. they have to do that thing that they were told never to do and uh um but yeah and when no, you're a kid the- when you're a kid you figure out a fun way to cross the streams too but <laughs> <laughs> that's kid that's just silly kid stuff <laughs> this i remember the crossing streams are very well from the video game that was a big yes. thing <laughs> oh really yeah yeah i'm actually kind of interested about that video game because a lot of these people they did the voices of those same characters in the, the video games and there were oh, multiple nice. of these and uh could you pick your character like the teenage mutant ninja turtle game now for the i mean something about the atari one in particular like that they're they're they was just ghostbusters you didn't have individual characters. you just shoot something <laughs> okay yeah, yeah. Well, the one other was a, I think there was a stand up one that may have been more fancy, but I don't remember the details about that one. I remember the Atari one very well, though. Okay. Stand up one sounds like for the Wii or something. <laughs> no, um, no, like, like arcade, <laughs> arcade, like style, arcade yeah. 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 Got it. There was one other redeeming quality I thought for this show, 
and it's kind of a minor one, but I thought it was a great premise. As soon as I started watching this, I was like, wow, the Ghostbusters franchise is perfect for an ongoing series. It's the ghost of the week. It's the problem of the week. It's like, it's never ending. Now, it's never ending. It's, you know, it's easy for me to say, but the, the, the writers have to keep coming up with new and fresh ideas. So that's the difficulty of it. But the formula itself is you could go on for 20 seasons, you know, just ghost of the week, problem of the week, you know, recurring ghosts, you know, things like that. So I thought it was a great premise. Uh, execution was a little rough around the edges, but uh, I don't know. Did you, uh, Muhammad, did you laugh at any point? I mean, it's chuckle at that New Jersey thing, even though I've also <laughs> <You're crazy. really. laughs> I don't have, I always write down the word ha if I, if I laughed and that's now when I put ha ouch, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any other ha's on the page. <laughs> I have zero ha ha's myself. That's how I put a note. If something was yeah. funny, I have, I think this is the first time I have zero ha ha's in something that I'm assuming is supposed to be funny. Yeah. What about you, Peter? What made you laugh? Uh, I, I did. I also giggled at the New Jersey joke. Um, uh, it's pretty much it. There, you know, this as you mentioned earlier, the soundtrack was was enjoyable. Um, I did like the opening credits. I thought the opening credits were yeah. fun. Um, Good point. Uh, you know, and to your to your point earlier about kind of the setup for the show, it's so weird because like they literally set up a great setup for the show, but then they just don't do it, which is like where like Slimer. It seems like Slimer broke their little like prison thing, Mm -hmm. which you would think is like, that's what the show is. Like all of these ghosts they've collected over the last 20 years suddenly escape and they have to go like track them all down again, like one by one. And uh, and yet they just they don't. Instead, it's just the three ghosts of the episode and that's it. They get out and it's like, well, why, why, why you guys had it? It's all right there. Mm -hmm. And and they just don't quite execute it. And it's very interesting. so uh, I misspoke upon looking more closely at my notes. I found three ha-has, count them three. Oh, wow. One is when uh, possibly New Jersey, I put a ha-ha next to there. I said, no intellect, possibly New Jersey. That was the, the joke there. And I think that the joke is that New York and New Jersey kind of have a rivalry. Yeah. I think it was just New Yorkers. Um, the other ha-ha, I think, was not laughing with them, but at them was that the car, I don't know if you noticed, I went back to check and make sure, the car's license plate said ECT1, but in the movie, it's Ecto1, ECTO1, this one said ECT1, uh-huh. I'm like, is this, you guys can use Ghostbusters, but you can't use the license plate of the car in Ghostbusters? Did, car get, did the car get broken in the show, in the movie? I don't think so. I think they used it again. I mean, but then they could just okay. do Ecto 2. It's true. So anyway, it's true. that was just a weird, weird flex. I didn't get it. But so I laughed at them. Uh, but one that was an actual earned laugh because it was in true Vank. I mean, the best part of the, of Ghostbusters, I think, is Bill Murray playing Peter Venkman. He's so freaking funny. Um, and it was also written by the the two scientists guys, uh, Harold Ramis and uh, Dan Aykroyd wrote the script. Hmm. I remember correctly, but it was when the owner, when they save some hotel or something, and the owner says, I can't thank you enough. And Peter Venkman says, true, true. I'm like, okay, that's, <laughs> they got him on that one. That was, that was good. That's all I got. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> but it was damn funny. All right. Well, doesn't sound like we have too much more no. on this one. I didn't have many notes. I was, I was very much through the whole thing. Just really looking forward to to, to finishing up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I can answer a, a question yet earlier about why is it called the real Ghostbusters as opposed yeah, to just please. Ghostbusters? Apparently, there was some like threat of lawsuit from Filmation, which is another animation company who at the time was trying to remake a TV show they had done in the seventies called Ghostbusters Two Words. And so oh. they were claiming they had the rights to animated shows called Ghostbusters. Oh. And so then this show felt like they needed to put the word real Ghostbusters. Oh, my gosh. That's a flex. <laughs> yeah. And Janine and I don't even, even said think... it, too. She said, no, this isn't Ghosts R Us. This is the real Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's what yeah, she so, said. Uh, 
that's uh that that explains that i don't even think filmation have you re- ever even produced that that remake but this is the didn't filmation do he-man they did yeah mm. and the star trek animated series oh, oh yeah. i did not know that that's a good one heard of them happy yeah. 50th anniversary star trek the animated series and for that matter yes. big kudos to star trek lower decks and star trek prodigy don't slight them anyway I say star trek prodigy. <laughs> yeah peter was holmstrom a oh, go ahead. Go, please. let's talk about you for a moment if we could um sure. you are an author and a screenwriter however what have you authored recently uh, I had a book come out in March called The Center Seat, which is an oral history of Star Trek book. And it's a, a companion book to the um, History Channel documentary series, uh, The Center Seat, 55 Years of, of Trek, um, which came out a couple of years ago. And uh, that is out there. It has a lot of behind the scenes. Um, oh, and there's the page even. Look at that. Uh, yeah. It's got a lot of uh, behind the scenes uh, uh, interviews with the cast and crew. Um, some fascinating insights into everything from the early days of Lucille Ball at Desilu, uh, all the way up through the end of, of Enterprise in 05. Um, so I'd love it if you guys would uh, check that out. That nice is cover too. Amazing. Yeah. How long did it take you to uh, scribe all that? You know, for the book, it was it was a very quick turnaround time. And then it, uh, so I did it in about like two and a half months. And, wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and. Um, but it was a wild fun time. I mean, you know, it's just writing a book about Star Trek. It's uh, one yeah. of my passions. So it's, it was very, very enjoyable. Did you have a favorite moment when writing it? Was there like something just that that was said that you just kind of made you pause and say, wow, this is fucking incredible. <laughs> I mean, it's a small thing, but like Ron Moore, Ronald D. Moore was on to discuss uh the deep space nine episode in in the pale moonlight and he talked about how like the name of the episode came from a line in batman the 89 film wow. like the joker is uh is reciting a, a line like dancing with the devil in the pale moonlight and mm-hmm. ronald d moore just figured that was just a quote from some work of literature or some psalm from the past or whatever and and he only learned later that like it was actually just for the movie. Like it, it was, it came from no other source from other than just that. And I was like, Oh, that's just, that's fun. Um, so yeah, that was very cool. It was, it's particularly lovely to hear, um, people's recollections now that some time has passed and they aren't necessarily on like the promotional train anymore. They can kind of speak a bit more openly about their experiences. And, uh, so hearing kind of just that, that insight, um was just was just really interesting really fascinating and it has some of the final interviews uh from people like leonard nimoy and uh harold um livingston who was the screenwriter for star trek the motion picture oh, um okay. and then kirstie alley i suppose too he, she she's on there to do an interview for star trek too and all those people passed away soon after their interviews were conducted so um so it's just it was really really fascinating to be able to, to hear their final insights you have a new writing project coming up right now too right i do yeah i mean next yeah. uh not this fall but next fall i'm gonna have uh three books come out um wow. two that are about the uh i have one that's a uh oral history of the star wars franchise um one that's going to be on specifically on kind of a, a biography of of marsha lucas who was george lucas's wife um during the time of the original series the original films and uh, then a book uh, that's going to be an oral history on the uh, on the Simpsons. So those three are going to be out next uh, next fall. I know you guys did an episode on on that a few weeks back, um, watching the first episode of that. And uh, and then I'm working on a book right now about the uh, Fast and the Furious franchise, which is uh, a wild fun time. I haven't been super familiar with the franchise, so this has been a, a cool experience to dig into that and do all the research needed. So yeah. Wow, it seems it's, it's not ending too, right? It's still moving right now, right? There's no, yeah, they're there's still no producing, on, yeah, they're yeah. still producing more, uh, more shows, more seasons. Um, mm-hmm. you know, TBD, whether or not there'll be more companion books to them, but uh, yeah, there you, go. But, uh, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. But it's been very successful for them. So, this is uh, all their document, all the documentaries are produced by the Nacelle company, who also mm-hmm. does like the toys that made us and things mm-hmm. like that. Um, so, uh, this is all kind of tied in with that. 
with that universe over there. So. Brian Volk Weiss of the Nacelle Company, they are doing just unbelievable things, reviving 80s cartoons and turning 80s toys into cartoons. And Brian's produced like, legions of stand-up comedians and things like that so what a huge up-and-coming production company it's got to be just like a thrill to be a part of that it is you know it's um it's uh it's a a very busy time for them over there i mean they're just producing stuff left and right so it's uh it adds a little bit more pressure because i'm like oh i really hope these books do well for them (laughs) because i I want i want this to be successful (laughs) sure it'll be great Unbelievable. Well, uh, Peter, can you tell everybody uh, where they can find you online if you've got a website or social media? Yeah. And your, um, and your show. And your show, too. Yeah. Oh, I yes. Also host, uh, I host a couple of podcasts myself. I host a, uh, uh, a Star Trek podcast with uh, Voyager screenwriter Lisa Klink. Uh, we've had Muhammad on a few times as a guest. He's been wonderful. Um, and uh, that show, we do uh, commentaries for... Um, for old episodes of Star Trek, kind of an eclectic mix. We don't go in order. We just sort of pick and choose where we want to talk about next. Um, so uh, that's called the Trexperts Briefing Room. We often focus on screenwriters or people, be, you know, with a behind the scenes like expertise to things. Um, so we we don't necessarily compete with you know people like the Seventh Rule or whatever who often have the <laughs> actors on to to discuss things like that. Um, so that's Trexpert's briefing room. You can find that, uh, anywhere podcasts come out. I also started a new podcast recently, um, called best TV never made, which is a show all about like high profile TV projects that, uh, never actually got to your television screen and, uh, not just, you know, spec scripts, not just, you know, whatever, but these are like high profile projects that you would have heard about on deadline or, uh, maybe even the pilot was shot and then ultimately not picked up to series. Um, so we, uh, just did a couple episodes about, uh, alien versus predator anime that had 10 episodes produced and we've just never seen it. Um, and then we have one coming up, uh, on the wild, wild west pilot, which was, uh, with a guest, uh, Narain Shankar, who was a star Trek alum. And, um, he and Ron Moore had, had written and, uh, a, a pilot for a wild, wild rest west, uh, reboot or remake, mm-hmm. um, about 10 years ago. Um, and we uh, dissect that, which is going to be a really interesting episode. What a um, brilliant so. idea. Can I just stop you? That is so yeah. <laughs> freaking cool. When you when you, you or whomever came up with that idea, didn't you stop and say, oh, yeah, this is going to be good. This is, <laughs> this is a good this is a good idea. Like, you know, when you've got a good idea, you know. Yeah, it's uh, it's great. I mean, no one's done it yet. So that's why I was like, wow, this is a, this is a great opportunity here to to do this. So it's we've done, you know, a lot of really interesting episodes. I mean, another animated content thing. We did a, a, a two episodes about Team Atlantis, which was a TV follow up to the Atlantis, the Lost Empire movie <laughs> from Disney, which has quite a cult following to it. And they had they had like nearly produced about 30 episodes for an animated follow up that would have basically been like the x-files but every week it was going to be on you know with that team just kind of bouncing around the globe dealing with all these uh, paranormal activities and and it sounded really cool and uh, we had two of the screenwriters on to talk about that but then like when the movie kind of underperformed disney just you know shelved it but uh it's just it's a uh, it's it's so fascinating to dig into these like what you know what ifs for mm-hmm. television history so everybody can find these podcasts wherever they find their podcast that's trexpert's briefing room and what was the second one uh best tv never made perfect best tv yeah. never made any other uh websites or social media yeah i mean i guess for now i am on twitter i guess it's not <laughs> called twitter anymore is it? it's just called, it's called twitter. X, but it, <laughs> uh but my handle there is uh, at peter underscore holmes that's h-o-l-m-s uh one one three eight and uh you can find me there um and yeah that's probably the best place to get me i'm on linkedin if you want to hit me up on linkedin um mm-hmm. yeah you know basically one one three eight or is it just like you were that far in no, it was a, it's a Star Wars reference. Oh, okay, got it. THX 1138. This oh, guy gets it. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> this guy yeah, gets yeah. it. I remember the THX now. Yeah. 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 All but, right. Uh, yeah. His next Twitter handle is going to be Peter Holmes IG88. <laughs> be the next one. Uh, all right, everybody. Four. 
See, Muhammad knows a little bit of Star Wars. He's well, like, they're too science fantasy for me. I don't, I just <laughs> thumb my nose like at them. <laughs> All right, everybody. Muhammad's got his karate chop ready. So you know what that means. It is time for the Bottom terrible lie. twos. Bottom line. Bottom line. Terrible twos. Bottom line. Uh, all right. It's, <laughs> Peter's like, what? What's happening here? Do they, they don't, they're not on the same page still. Uh, question number one is, Dr. Muhammad Noor, on a scale of one to ten, what would you give this first episode of the real Ghostbusters, the animated series entitled Toys Are Us? Just based on how much I enjoyed it. <laughs> you know, if I wrote down on my piece of paper, I was going to go with it. 3.5. <laughs> Not too bad. Yeah, I did like I did like the theme music. And, the, and actually the intro sequence. You were right, Peter. The intro sequence, too, was pretty good. I actually was kind of optimistic at that point. Yeah. But then we kind of fell off. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, what is this? <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, Peter, what about you? On a scale of 1 to 10, what would you give this first episode? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with a, a three, I believe. Uh, you know, the animation isn't terrible. Um, as you said, the voice acting is pretty good. Um, and uh, the theme, the theme, the opening credits is, is nice. Um, uh, yeah, so I'll stick with a three. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, boy, you guys are rough. For me, <laughs> I would give it an 8.6. If we were doing double days, but we aren't. So it's a 4.3. <laughs> it's a 4.3 for me. And it is elevated by the incredible voice acting. You could just tell right away. These voice actors are highly talented, highly creative, highly seasoned. And then a cursory glance of their IMDb pages. And I was like, whoa, I probably should have heard of these people by now. And some people are probably frowning at me about it. So it's a 4.3. They saved the day. The premise is great. The execution wasn't quite there. Maybe the subsequent episodes will be much better because we see that a lot. When you have a great premise, sometimes the great premise shines through eventually once they get their footing, like Star Trek seasons. You know, a lot of them aren't great at first and they get better as the show goes on. Uh, so this one's a 4.3 saved oh, by the voice actors. Through. Yeah. Not too much variance. Pretty, pretty close. However, question number two is the real one that the online streaming community wants to know. For the purposes of this podcast, we all had to watch the first episode of The Real Ghostbusters. But now that the podcast is over and we're free to move about the internet, Dr. Muhammad Noor, would you, of your own volition, watch the second episode? No. <laughs> Feel free to take your time and think about it. <laughs> I didn't think about all that one. No, it's just no. <laughs> not of my own volition ain't gonna watch that no mo mm -hmm. nope nope deleting that off my watch history on on youtube so it doesn't accidentally say like oh, you might want to see it. like nope don't even want it <laughs> that's just vengeful that's spiteful. <laughs> hurtful uh what about you peter you probably would right uh no I wouldn't. And I'd, I'd even go one step further. I would, if I ever get, have kids, I, I would actively <laughs> try to make them not watch this show. <laughs> There's plenty of animated shows that I might put on sometime be like, you know, I'm not going to really watch it with you, but here you go. This is nice. And this is not going to be one of those shows. Yeah. No. Boy, I have to beat you? that. So Muhammad said he's going to delete it from his history. <laughs> Peter said, if I have children, they're not going to be allowed to watch it. So I got to top that. Okay. No, from me. And Neil deGrasse Tyson is trying to create a time machine so he can go back and spend a day with his father one more time. It's a beautiful story. If he invents that, I'm going to figure out a way to use that time machine to go back and make sure that this was never made, but that instead another Ghostbusters movie was made oh, sometime in the 80s yeah. and 90s. You know, that's what I will do for the greater good. Or if the episodes are better later, I'll just have them you know, cut out this first episode or explain yeah. slime or something. That's what I would do. Uh, but it's a no from me. I'm so sorry. It's a no. I'd just go back and watch the first Ghostbusters movie again and again. And Dr. Noor, you have to watch the first Ghostbusters movie. I'll watch it with you. Come on over. <laughs> Live two and a half thousand miles away. <laughs> That's like 4,000 kilometers, dude. <laughs>
Anyway. So that's it, everybody. If you enjoyed this, or even if you didn't, please make your suggestions below in the comments. Let us know what you'd like us to review. Please like this video. If you like this video, give it a like. If you didn't like this video, give it a like. And uh, we appreciate your time. Thanks very much for joining us. What I'm trying to say is this podcast was real. This podcast was a great opportunity to learn more about Peter and his great adventures. And yeah, we talked about some show too. Adventures. (laughs) This podcast was marshmallow. Mm. That's good. This was a good (laughs) ass podcast then. Uh, Look, everybody, thanks very much for joining us. We will see you soon. Remember what Mr. Michael Kenyon Rosenberg likes to say. Don't forget to be an organ donor and don't forget to watch the first of thing. All right. Freeze frame like Peter Venkman. Wait, which one Peter again? I'm just kidding. Smile and breathe.